Check. There we go. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. All right, I believe we're back from commercial break. Live in the studio. Thanks for being our audience out there and um, for those on Facebook Live. It's wonderful to have this table talk every week. We get to learn more about different people from our church, from our community. And um, tonight we have, as our guest, Kelly Roberts. So welcome you, Kelly. Thank you for Amen. having me. It's a blessing. Met with Kelly uh, a few weeks ago, and she was just sharing during this whole COVID-19 where we've been um, stuck home a lot of the time. Uh, God's been doing a lot of things in people, revealing a lot of things. Amen. And Kelly's one of them that uh, God's been revealing a lot too. I mean, anyone of us that open our ears to God and seek him and ask him things and ask him to reveal things, he will. And um, there's a lot of voices we can listen to in such a time like this. But I'm choosing to listen to the voice of God. And Kelly is definitely one who listens to the voice of God. She's an intercessor, intercessor, a prayer warrior, very prophetically gifted. And she was just sharing with me the many things that God revealed to her. And I said, okay, it's time to have you on Table Talk. Our um, theme has been intimacy. That's what we've been talking about. And I love this theme because this is, if I could just stay right there and preach about intimacy forever, that's good. Because there's nothing else that God desires from us yes. than to be closer to him. Yes. And with everything that's going on in the world, it's, that's the one thing I believe God's doing more than anything, is getting us closer to him. Absolutely. And so um, we taught, I taught this Sunday from the book of John, and it was John chapter 8. And the theme of that book was, that chapter of John was Freedom. And how do freedom and intimacy go, to go together? Well, the more intimate you become with the Lord, the more free you become. Amen. So in this chapter, it dealt with the woman caught in adultery. And Jesus said the statement that we've all heard, you know, you, who, you without sin throw the first stone. Mm -hmm. Of course, nobody could throw the stone. And then Jesus looked at the woman and said, now where are your accusers? They were gone. And then Jesus said this bold statement to the woman, now go and sin no more. Now that's easier said than done. But if Jesus actually said that, that means that's a word for all of us. Amen. That it's possible. He doesn't say things that are impossible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. We've gone through times in our life where we've gone through such a struggle, we think we can never change but God. And so I want you to share, Kelly, with our audience and those who are listening online, about your personal testimony of coming out of sin and how Christ has drawn you into a deeper relationship with him, because that's the key. Getting deeper in him is what frees us from sin. So share about that a little bit. Amen. Um, I want to thank you for this invitation, a table talk, and um, I'm grateful for the timing of Abba. Um, his timing is impeccable, as we know. Um, and it is absolutely amazing that you would come out of John 8 concerning the woman that was caught in adultery. Um, my story is almost similar, but not. And so this is your first time hearing it, although it's been shared. But I was once married and um, I went through an unhealthy divorce. And prior to the divorce being settled, I began to date. And so many will say, well, that's okay. But it really wasn't okay. And that's really committing 
um, adultery, whether we dress that up or not. Um, but in that, I was in a backslidden condition. In that, um, not being divorced and my divorce being finalized, um, that's when Father actually called me. And so sometimes we don't think that Abba has the ability to call us out in our sin. And although no one dragged me before anyone to accuse me, Father, he himself pulled me out of that relationship. And I'll never forget the date. It was um, October 7th, 2011, that I actually had an encounter with Father, um, a face-to-face, one-on-one encounter that I will, again, never forget. And I had been experiencing some things prior to that date. I did not know what it was, but I remember it was a Friday going home, and I just sat on the couch, and I was feeling like weights on my shoulder, and I began to say, like, what is it that you want? I just blurted out, what do you want from me? What is it that you want from me? And just from that simple question alone, Mm -hmm. Father began to speak to me. Um, I have my journals. I told you a lot of um, what I will share will come out of the intimate place. And so this is what he spoke to me on October 7, 2011. And I just want to encourage those listeners who may have accusers or feel like they're in sin, just know that there are no respect of persons and that Father will meet you right where you are in your sin. You don't have to try to clean yourself up because that'll never happen. And so in the midst of my um, adulterous, uh, I don't want to say affair because we were separated, not to justify it, but I still, the marriage was not dissolved. So he said to me, I will open up your eyes to your understanding. You will know my voice and not be confused. I am going to use you. He says, I will give you wisdom and your understanding will be enlightened. He began to tell me to seek his face, seek his face. Then he began to tell me that he was doing a cleansing within me. And he said, all past hurts, all past disappointments. He said, it's over, it's done. And so it just kind of relates to the story where he says, where are your accusers? And sometimes you may not have a physical person who accuses you, but the enemy will whisper and accuse you of certain things and cause you to feel um, condemnation. Thank you, getting tongue-tied. But he says, all um, disappointments over, it's done. He told me that he was doing a new thing in me. He began to tell me to rest in him. He said, abide in me. And then he be just began to tell me to pay attention and that I would learn of him. And he told me to stay in this particular posture. And it was in this posture that he would use me. And so um, I relate to the story um, in John 8. I actually do. But I also relate to the freedom that came with being intimate with Father, even not knowing what was actually taking place the more I sought him, the more there was a relationship being cultivated. And I found myself desiring that place, hungering that place more and more. And so um, it's just a very intimate place. Yeah. Amen. And thanks for letting us know a little bit about what you've come out of. Yes, and absolutely. We, we've and all come out of something. That's right. <laughs> and oftentimes... Um, religion might tell you don't tell that story, Mm -hmm. but that is my story. That is my truth. Mm -hmm. And um, it's because of that that um, I am where I am. Father delivered me from that. And so I can't tell my story without talking about where I came from. So Mm -hmm. my encounter came right out of that space. And we see with the people that brought the woman to Jesus, these were religious people. 
you know, religious people are condemners. Those who have religion and not a relationship with the Lord. You know, how do you concede somebody's intimate with the Lord by they act like Jesus? They act like the Father. They don't condemn. That's right. They love. That's right. They love unconditionally. Love changes people, not condemnation. Mm -hmm. Condemnation drives people away from God. Love draws people to God. And our job as, as God's sons and daughters is to draw people to the Father. Yes. And so... If we're intimate with the Lord, that's how we see people. When we see people fall into sin, we don't look at them and condemn them and judge them. We look at them with the eyes of God with mercy. Yes. Mercy saw me. You know, there's a powerful song years ago by T.D. Jakes. <laughs> My wife used to sing all the time. She talked about mercy saw me. And I think it's about the woman. Mm. You know, mercy saw me. Jesus saw the woman and had mercy. And that's how God wants us to operate in this world he wants us to be people who give mercy, not judgment and condemnation. Yes. That's what draws the fish in, mercy. When they say the condemnation, they run away. Now, Jesus didn't just leave the woman with that, go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. He began to give the how-to. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to know that you're a sinner. <laughs> and then somebody says, stop sinning. Okay. How many of us have stopped sinning before, tried to stop sinning before? Without the Lord, we have no chance to stop sinning. Mm -hmm. It's only through him. So he begins to break down some teaching. He's speaking to the Pharisees, but he knows there's people listening that are open. Mm -hmm. And he begins to teach them, first of all, that the key to coming out of sin is by living in the light. Mm -hmm. He said that he is the light. And the only way out of darkness is by being in the light. But we got to choose. There's choices. Life is full of choices. There's light or darkness. And we got to choose light. And so, Kelly, tell me some revelation that God has shared with you about what it's like. How do you live in the light? Because this is a lifestyle that he's talking about. This is a way of life. It's one thing to make a choice in a moment to come out of sin. But it's not easy to maintain that. Mm -hmm. To be consistent. Tell us about that. And so, um, once again, um, concerning the light in my intimate place with Father and during prayer, there was this particular time, um, and I have it here, where I was in prayer, and Father began to ask questions. And anyone that's, um, that remains in the place with Abba, you understand that there's dialogue, you understand that this is relationship, you understand that there's an exchange, there's conversations, you pose questions to him, he answers sometimes, sometimes not, and then he asks you questions. But what I've learned is that when he poses a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. And so um, he began to say, what does light have to do with darkness? And I know it's concerning the body of Christ. What does light have to do with darkness? And he said, I've called you into my marvelous light. Walk in my light. The choice is yours. And like you said, we have a choice that we have to decide um, what we're going to do, whom we're going to serve. And he said, choose this day whom you will serve. And he kept saying, come out of the dark. And this is a word for the body saying, come out of the dark. It's in my light. It's in my light that I will reveal what's been hidden. And so oftentimes we don't understand that he is the light. And so if we want to know what's going on and you know all of these questions that sometimes swirl around i've found that um more than not we avoid in becoming intimate um more than not most people don't know how to become intimate and sometimes it's out of fear because Father is going to expose, amen, he's going to expose um, the very things that are in the dark and things that have been hidden. And so he says, in my light, you will only find truth. And so when you find people that just 
are walking in untruths or they remain in um, a space where they can't receive truth. It just goes back to where are you dwelling? Where are you at? You know, because Father does not desire that we remain in the dark. He says, where you will only find my revelation, meaning we want to um, receive revelation. The world offers information, but Holy Spirit releases revelation. And so when we want to know the heart of Father and we want to um, allow Father to unlock keys and mysteries unto us, we have to go into a place of deep intimacy. And he says, you must remain. And that's the key, remaining in truth. My truth is light. There are some that are drawn to the light, but then there are some that scatter from the light. And then he posed the question, which one are you? And so I just want to read, if it's okay, um, John 3 concerning the light. Um, John 3, 20, 21 says, For every wrongdoer hates, loathes, detests the light, and will not come out into the light, but shrinks from it. Test I mean, lest his works, his deeds, his activities, his conduct be exposed and reproved. But he who practices truth, who does what is right, comes out into the light so that his works may be plainly shown to what they are, wrought with God, divinely prompted, done with God's help independence upon him. So this is not something that we can do on our own. It's just constant, constant um, time in the presence of Father. And that's how we remain in the light. That's how his light remains upon us. And so. And the scripture that came to my mind is, you know, Second Corinthians, I believe, 6, where it says, come out from amongst them and separate yes. ye mm-hmm. yourselves. And so that is so key that we we got to allow God to expose things. And we got to want it. You got to want it. Mm-hmm. You got to want to be clean. You got to want the light. You want no darkness. I'm a, a little bit of a neat freak. I don't like, I like every part of my house to be clean. Amen. I don't like any area to be dirty. But it takes time. And time I don't always have. <laughs> you know, we've been given more time lately to clean up some things. Oh, yes. To go into those dark oh, things, yes. dark areas, those places you've avoided. And that's what happens when we gl- neglect different areas of our life. God doesn't want any area neglected. He wants us to be whole. Oh, that's right. He wants right. us to be complete. That's right. He wants us to be filled with him. Every area, the Every attic area. even. That's right. Nothing left except him in us. But sometimes, again, what you were saying, we're afraid to go back in those areas because some of those areas hurt. We've avoided them for so long. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, once the light hits that area, darkness dispels. That's right. It's not like we have to, like, stay in it for long. We just let the light hit it. God takes care of it. Amen. When we try to deal with it ourselves, or when it was brought up to the surface, it, it got the best of us. But when with Christ now in our life, the light just shines and it's gone. Now all we got to do is surrender. That's it. I was sharing how, um, you know, how bright and it is this time of year in the summer. You go outside and it's just bright everywhere. But yet there's these shadows everywhere. It's bright right, right. It's bright right now. We got lights all kind. Of, but yet there's shadows all around and the yeah. shadows don't seem that dark. But that's how deception is. It's in the shadows. Mm-hmm. There's so much deception all around us, mm. so much deceit, so much lies. There's so many half-truths. Satan comes very subtly. Yes. And that's what Jesus began to share now. The latter part is he was um, responding to the Pharisees. He began to tell them, you know, the truth shall set you free. Mm-hmm. That these people, Father, really was Satan. He, he began to go hardcore with with these Pharisees who were saying, oh, our father's Abraham. No, he said, no, your father is Satan. That's what he said. You're full of lies, and all you know is lies. You, mm-hmm. do, you can't see God mm-hmm. because you don't know him as your father. Yes. 
You only know about him. That's why you brought the woman of adultery out and you condemned her and accused her. And then Jesus exposed their business and they had to run. They had no power over sin because all they knew was about God and the God that they thought they knew about, they really knew nothing about. You got to really know him. So truth is so important. Knowing the truth in order to stay in the light, yes. in order to really experience freedom. So share more about that. So we know that the Bible speaks about his sheep. My sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. And for me personally, a lot of time, and it may seem like, oh, she's repeating herself, and I am, but that's my truth. Um, avoiding certain voices and avoiding um, voices that don't come from Father comes from being intimate with him. It's like Father wants us to be able to discern his voice so clear, where, whereas, like, if you constantly are talking to someone, right, if your wife calls, you never have to look at the phone and say, oh, Lorena, it's you, or, or wh whoever you speak to constantly, you are very familiar with their voice. Mm -hmm. And um, this is how we should be so familiar with the voice of Father, that no matter what voice is speaking or who tries to call your phone, if someone calls and tries to emulate my daughter's voice or even imitate, because I know her, there's gonna be a distinction. And so that kind of goes into counterfeits. You know, it comes so close, but you have to understand, have an eye to see, an ear to hear, to be able to discern what is what. And so it's imperative and it's vital that we remain with our ears almost suction cup to the heart of Father so that when all of these things, these voices, whatever, people, places, and things, like we don't wanna limit it to people. All sorts of things speak, right? And so if you're not familiar with Father's voice, it's very easy it, because the enemy is so subtle mm -hmm. and he always tries to imitate and duplicate and everything concerning Father's kingdom. He tries to make, I mean, and we have to understand he is not going to come with this voice like you came with mm -hmm. during the play, like, uh, uh, you know, like it's this deep, crazy voice. It's going to sound very familiar. It's going to sound like the real deal. It may sound like, well, no, but we have to have an assurity of who's speaking to us. And the only way um, that we can have this assurity is spending time with Father, becoming that much more intimate. And that's where my growth, my growth came from because it's very easy. I'm not making it seem like it's not easy and that we haven't made mistakes or we've heard wrong or we've missed it. I've missed it several times, you know, but that's a part of growing. It's a part of maturing and actually acknowledging without pride or arrogance that we missed it, you know, I was off. And so whenever we have that ability to humble ourselves and say, you know what, Lord, I missed it. He says, okay, well, now there's room for growth. And so we wanna remain teachable. We wanna remain open um, so that these truths, his light, his freedom, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And so in his presence, I'm free. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. In his presence, I can weep. In his presence, I can become undone, you know? And th this, is, this, is, this is really um, <laughs> something, but I'm gonna tell you, when I was in the world and when I um, entered a relationship with Father, because that's what he desires, you know, his heart, his heart desires his children. And I will never forget, he said, why are you afraid to become naked with me? And so we can become undone 
in the presence of Abba without accusers, without voices, without condemnation. And he didn't stop there. He's like, you know, because you've kind of done that with people that you had no business doing, but yet with me, the one who will guard, save, and protect, you know. And so again, um, I think the intimacy part, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some people don't even know when you say intimate with Father because the world has perverted intimacy, right? It's hard to wrap your mind around, right? What it is to be intimate with Father because even that has become perverted. And so that's even almost difficult to try. Well, what does that look like? You know, so there's a constant explaining that this is a pure place, this is a clean place, it's a safe place because, again, that has become very perverted. Yeah, and you've got to be born again, first of all, to understand this. Mm -hmm. Because this, we're talking spiritual. So well, how can a man be intimate with God the Father? Mm -hmm. we're talking spiritual. The natural-minded man cannot understand these That's things. That's right, it's foolish. Like Nicodemus couldn't understand what it meant to be born again. Mm -hmm. How could you go back into your mother's womb? It's spiritual talk mm -hmm. he's talking about. And we're called, that's why we were created. That's why Adam and Eve, and going back to the garden, that's what we were made for, fellowship. And until we get back to that place of being naked, having no shame, that's right. no guilt, that's right. nothing to hide, not going and dressing ourselves up, hiding right. our sin, but allowing him, he loves us unconditionally. We don't have to hide sin from the one who knows that's all right. things. That's right. So we might as well just, just like when our, you know, when you're a kid and your parent has that, in, they just know things. You know, right. as a mom, you just know things <laughs> yes. about your daughter. You just yes. know yes. before she tells you, yes. before you find it out, yes. you just know. God knows all things, and so we might as well be real with him. The one person we can be real with is him. And it's safe. Is he so safe? Oh, yeah, it's so much. And he, he doesn't, his way of discipline is so much better because <laughs> it's out of love. He disciplines out of yes. love. He disciplines in a way that transforms us. And what we see also in the garden is how subtle the enemy is. You know, we could easily talk about being free from sin, and we who have been believers think of the big sins, and we think of uh, fornication, and we think of adultery, we think of, you know, um, um, lying and cheating and, and backstabbing, and we think of all these different things. But as we see with the Pharisees, their sin, and even though they had these hidden sins, but their sin was more being condemning, being more judging. It was religious sins. It was sins that don't reflect the Father. See, what we see back in the garden is we were made in God's image. And so I, the things I hear, I judge by his nature. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much twisted truth just like satan came and twisted truth to eve mm -hmm. and adam there's so much twisted truth in and now we live in a world that we get bombarded with media the prince of the air so there's so much little subtle deception to take us away from freedom to bring us into the bondage of religion you know so many people that are so-called men and women of god but are speaking lies and deceit and, and, and bringing bondage upon people instead of freedom. And so how do you know you stepped into that bondage that you were once free, and then just like the children of Israel, they kept wanting to go back to Egypt. We go back to Egypt, but it's not the Egypt that we once knew, the, 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 the sin, but it's more of this religious bondage of, of judgment and condemnation and works and, and jealousies and religious comparison, and that happens all the time. So... I don't know, you, I, I didn't tell you I was going to go into this, but I think God wants us to go into it a little bit. So just share from that perspective. Come on. <laughs> What's the question again? So the question <laughs> with all that that I shared was Satan is so subtle. Mm -hmm. You know, God wants us to be in that garden naked, mm -hmm. but he comes and just twist truth mm -hmm. and if we don't know his voice clearly we can easily give in mm -hmm. to things that seem right but are not right mm -hmm. things that seem good but are not god 
They don't reflect his nature. How do we, how can we keep clear of those traps? Of course, um, again, it's remaining in our word. Um, I, I think a lot of times the traps come in where we allow someone else's voices to become louder than fathers. Mm -hmm. And again, that's so easy to be done when we don't study to show ourselves approved, mm -hmm. when we just come in on a Sunday or a Wednesday, like you get up here and you release the word of God, Pastor Steve gets up, Pastor Josh, um, I mean, Pastor uh, Jonathan. Jonathan and um, Prophet Joel, but we have a responsibility too, right? And so I think oftentimes we put a lot, of, we put more responsibility on um, leaders. And when we find ourselves in these pits or these booby traps, oftentimes, well, it's their fault. But then there's another side where you do have leaders that do not preach the unadulterated word of God. You do have leaders who twist truths. And so, and it's sad, really. Um, I don't wanna stay here too long because that uh, there's a righteous indignation that rises up in me because you see it more often than not, truth be told, unfortunately. Um, but I would say to anyone watching or if you find yourself in that space, make sure that you seek first God's voice. Um, and you may not know, well, what that looks like. Continue to seek him. Continue to seek him. And he speaks to each and every one of us differently. But we cannot, we cannot, I don't care what leader it is. We cannot, I cannot put my whole everything into what you said. And again, we want to follow the frequency of Father. And so when you are, um, when you understand the language of kingdom, right? And you understand the heart of Father, when you release, there's something within you that resonates. That's God. When Pastor Steve releases the word, it's like, yes, that's God. But again, you have so many people um, who trip up the body for control, um, different motives for whatever. Um, I just would say to not find yourself in that place, just to commune with Father. But it also breaks my heart because there's a lot of people that get hurt with Pharisees and Sadducees right in the church, you know, right here, like in the four walls. Um, and they use the word of God for means of control. And so I thank God for Praise Tabernacle where it's been a place of freedom. It's been a place where I can breathe. It's been, again, people may say, well, Praise Tabernacle is not perfect. Well, no, imperfect yet pure. And so the Bible doesn't require perfect people. So when people say, oh, I'm not perfect, I'm not perfect, Father never required that. But there is a requirement in that, that we remain pure, that we have pure hearts. Blessed are the pure in heart. And whether you know it or not, you're a leader. And so there must be a level of purity, right? And so if we don't remain pure, when we are releasing things that's not pure, what happens, people become tainted and people become hurt. And then people fall in these places that sometimes they feel like they can't come out of because of the church. And so, um, yeah, we just wanna remain in a secret place with Father. We want to remain intimate with him 
and make that our first relationship. Amen. And, you know, again, judge everything by the fruit person. And that's so key is to know God intimately is to know his nature. Mm -hmm. And when you can know his nature, then you can judge all things. And then you can see through people. And everybody's a work in, in pro that doesn't mean we just cast people aside because right. they're not perfect. They're not completely in the image of God, but allows us to see where they're at, you know, and, and bring correction when needed. And it allows us to see where we're at. But it's so important to not be deceived is to know the very nature of God. He will never go against his nature. So no matter what we hear and see and read and watch, if it if it violates his nature, it is not it's of God. Not God. And we can cast it aside. And and some things are mixed. And you can take what's good and you can and you can you know, get rid of what's not. You know, Apostle, speaking about the fruit and the nature of God, even when you know the nature of God, you will have Pharisees and Sadducees and people come up against you when you know the fruit and that is not the fruit and how we gauge the fruit is like you said knowing the nature of God knowing his fruit it's proof here we can go to the word of God but when you stand up for righteousness and say well hey you know that that wasn't quite God you know even in that I think sometimes people fall in pits because they don't want to have to deal with backlash and things of that sort, but we do have to know the nature. It's so imperative to know the nature and the fruit that's being produced. And you can just look around and, okay, what kind of fruit are they producing? No matter who they are, no matter who they say they are, just look at the fruit and, and you, you can always tell by the fruit and what's being produced. And be open to speak out against. Some people are in deception and don't know it. Mm -hmm. Some people believe in lies and nobody exposes it. Yes. You know, as being people of the light and people of the truth, we got to be able to speak truth and bring things to the light. Mm -hmm. But we got to have God's nature at the same time. Absolutely. Do it things his way and in his timing. Jesus confronted these Pharisees. I mean, he went to their face and said, you, Father, is Satan. The same Jesus is in us, and he may use us to speak such kind of things. we got to be willing to allow him in a society that is so afraid of offending people and so afraid of, of being politically correct. we got to be willing to speak truth mm -hmm. and expose darkness. Mm -hmm. But again, it will only come forth with God's nature which is love, mm -hmm. but his love corrects. It does. Jesus spoke to the Pharisees, your father is Satan, in love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we got to be able to be willing. His, his word is a sword, and it will uh, poke, <laughs> yes. and it will poke hard. It will go deep, and we got to be willing to let the sword loose. Mm -hmm. And, and, and be an instrument that God can use. There's a lot of darkness in the world because a lot of us Christians are being silent. We've got to expose things. But we've got to make sure that what we're exposing is definitely from God because there's a lot of people exposing all kinds of stuff, but it doesn't mean it's, it's God doing it. That's right. I concur. There's so much conspiracy theories and so many things and all that, but we've got to make sure that we're instruments of God when we're exposing lies and we're bringing, you know, in the um, radio program I had today, the brother Will Ford was exposing, you know, the, where abortion came from, where, um, how it's to wipe out the black race, how these wow. things, and, and went to the root. But he's exposing things out of eugenics and, and all this stuff that goes back to the Nazi Germany and parent, Planned Parenthood is from, is, was based out of eugenics to wipe out, wipe out African Americans. He's bringing forth truth this is truth as well. Mm -hmm. Just as much as truth that That's right. is this, we're called to expose darkness, to wipe Satan out of this earth. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility. So, Kelly, it's about that time we're going to close out, but share some final thoughts, anything on your heart. So even in that, what you just shared and um, the man coming forth, this is a time of um, exposure 
whether we want to acknowledge that or not. And Father saying, I'm, I've come and there's a major overhaul that's taking place. And so when you look around, there's a lot going on. And but even in the midst of that, Abba saying, I know it doesn't look good with the naked eye, but he's in it. He is so in it. He he's not ignorant to what's going on and what's happening now. He said this will be written in history books. And so that what's happened, it's been a divine synchronization, right? This is something globally and it hasn't been limited to one space, one place, one country. This is globally what's taking place. And so Father is doing a major overhaul. I believe that he's preparing his bride. He's cleaning up the church and it's so necessary. He's bringing order back to church because of, and we are the church, but there's so much that's been happening in the four walls that he's saying, no, that's not my original blueprint. And so in this hour, um, in this um, dispensation in which we are, he is just bringing everything. He's tearing down things that weren't built of him. And he's just saying no more self-promotion. You talked about the flesh, flesh to flesh, no more flesh because no flesh can glory. He said, no flesh will glory in my sight. And so he wants us to be so humble and so made pure so that really we can be used. He's looking for vessels of honor. How do we become vessels of honor? By spending time with him and allowing him and his refiner's fire to burn those things off, shake those things off, even the things that we don't even realize that are attaching itself to us. The more we go into the presence of the Lord, the more we are changed. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. So we'll close out with um, 2 Corinthians 3.18. And all of us as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, in the word of God. So this is a timing that if we weren't stepping in the word of God, we have to step in the word of God. And it says, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. That's a passage to meditate on. I'm telling you this whole series intimacy into me. You see, yes. you want to see, you want to see truth. You want to see reality. You want to see what, God is really doing in this world right now? You want to see what God is doing in your life? You want to see who you really are? Right there it said you got to behold in the word. This is how we get deeper. This is how we see. We got to know this word in and out. Both the logos which opens the, the door to the rhema. Yes. To know the written and to know the divine revealed word that he's always revealing to us who seek him. So, Kelly, we just thank you so much thank you for so just much enlightening for us me. with thank all that the you. Lord has put on your heart. Yes, thank you and so much. What a for blessing you me. are it's to this honor. body. Thank you. It's an honor. I'm honored. Thank you so much. How about you close out in prayer? Awesome. So, Father, we just thank you. We honor you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are highlighting now purity. So, Father, we ask, Father, anything that's not like you, Father, that you will purge us, that you will make us white as snow. Purge us with hyssop. Father, I pray, God, that if there's any unclean thing within us, Father, it's not that you've come to condemn us, but, Father, you want to clean us up. Father, I pray, oh, God, that you would continue, oh, God, to make us 
vessels of honor. God, I pray that we will seek your face like never before. Abba, I pray that we would do nothing without seeking you. We would not go ahead of you. We would not lag behind you, but we will walk in sync with what it is. We will walk cadence, oh God, with what you're doing. Father, we just ask, O oh God, that you would continue to clean up the nation, O oh God. We thank you, Father, that you are bringing things right back to your original blueprint. And Father, even though some things may be turned upside down, those who are willing, those who are willing to surrender, those who will give you a constant yes, Father, use those, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I even would ask, if there's anyone hurting right now because of anything that's happened through the church or whatever the case may be, oh God, that you would heal them right where they are, Father, that you would be the bomb of Gilead, Father, that you would go right into that space and that place, Father, that you would root up, oh God, the thing that's held us back in the mighty name of Jesus. Prepare us, Father, for the work that is ahead. We thank you, we honor you, oh God, and it's in your mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you again, Kelly. What a blessing. Um, if you do need prayer out there, please let us know, both here at Praise and you online. Let us know how we can pray for you. And uh, this Sunday coming up, we got a great guest, great speaker, great friend of mine, Henry Davis, missionary from the Philippines. Um, he will be here with us ministering the word. We've got a special also um, licensing and um, and commissioning of Stephen Davy and his family as they embark to serve in Amsterdam. And uh, this will be their final Sunday here before they leave, so I encourage you to come out this Sunday and or from home. And God bless you and have a wonderful night. Amen. Amen.